me down. Don't let me down. Don't pump it up. Don't pump it up. All around. All around. A two dash. Two dash. 96. 96. A two dash. Two dash. 96. 96. A one, two, three, four. I land. Lance Corporal Harry W. Dawson have been informed by the Special Agent R.C. McGuire of the Naval Investigative Service that I am suspected of murder, conspiracy to commit murder, and conduct on becoming a United States Marine in a matter of private first class Winomina to Santiago. I have also been advised that I have the right to remain silent and make no statement at all. Any statement I do make can be used against me in a trial by court martial or other judicial or administrative proceedings. I have the right to consult with my lawyer prior to further questioning. I am presently assigned to Rifle Security Company Windward 2nd Platoon Delta, NAV Base, Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. I am a PFC in the United States Marine Corps assigned to Marine Rifle Security Company Windward 2nd Platoon Delta. I will have been in the Marine Corps for 10 months as of August. I entered Private Santiago's barracks room on the evening of 6 July at about 23.50. I was accompanied by PFC Leah Donning. I was accompanied by my squad leader, Lance Corporal Harriet W. Dawson. We tied our hands and feet with rope. We tied Pirate Santiago's hands and feet with rope and forced a piece of cloth into her mouth. We placed duct tape over her eyes and mouth. I have read this two-page statement that Special Agent McGuire has prepared for me at my request as we discussed its contents. I've been allowed to make all changes and corrections, initializing those changes and corrections. These statements are true and factual to the best of my knowledge. Danny! I'm late. You know what I just saw? No. But I'm genuinely late. There's a lady lawyer from Internal Affairs wandering around the hallway. What's she doing? I don't know. Why do I care? Ordinarily, when Internal Affairs sends a lawyer down here to talk to the lawyers, it means someone screwed up. Was it you? No. Have you done anything wrong? No. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, I don't know. Listen, I'm really tired. Would you do me a favor? Sure. If she talks to you, if she mentions anything about Dematis. Who? Dematis, the engineer. Remember my guy who was littering in the Admiral's Tulip Garden? I may have cut a few corners. Would you cover me? Sure. Yeah? I don't know what you're talking about, but sure, no problem. Dematis, the engineer. Littering in the Admiral's Turnip Garden. Tulips. OK. Wh where are you going? I'm representing an infant who bought and smoked $10 worth of oregano. He thought it was weed? <laughs> I can only hope. You're not concerned. What's he going to be charged with? Possession of a condiment? He'll get a C misdemeanor. 15 days restricted duty. I mean the lady lawyer from Internal Affairs. You're not concerned? My softball team's playing Bethesda Medical tomorrow. I can't afford to be concerned about anything right now. I'll see you at lunch. I'm Lieutenant Commander John Galloway. Captain Whitaker, come on in. I appreciate you seeing me on such short Bronski, is that your real opening a case? Yes, ma'am. Bronski and I go way back. He speaks very highly of you, ma'am. Well, that's not true, is it? No, ma'am. I know you, don't I? I don't believe you. You work at internal affairs. Yes, ma'am. I hate internal affairs. Yes, ma'am. And you're a woman? Yes, ma'am. Well, that's all right. Thank you, ma'am. You are the one who recycled us 14 B misdemeanors last winter. That may have been me. 14 B misdemeanors, drunk and disorderly. We had them closed. No, ma'am, you didn't. The blue copies of the charge sheets weren't filed to division with the IC-1. Nobody cares, Commander. My boss, the Judge Advocate General, does. He doesn't care more than I do. It was you. There are rules, ma'am. I'm sure you understand. You had my guys working on Christmas Day, filling out charge sheets in longhand. Christmas Day, Commander. It was in the interest of justice, ma'am. Are you here to bother anyone? Absolutely not. No, ma'am, not at all. Only if necessary. What can I do for you? Two prisoners are being held in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. They pleaded guilty to murder two, conspiracy to commit, and conduct unbecoming. Over the weekend, I petitioned Captain Bronsky to deny the guilty pleas and to order the prisoners moved here to Washington to be assigned counsel. What's the matter with the guilty pleas? Did somebody misspell conspiracy? No, ma'am. But the prisoners confessed to murder at 3 o'clock in the morning during a 20-minute interview in which neither had an attorney. So Bronski is bringing him up to Washington? Yes, ma'am. You'll be receiving a memo from division instructing you to assign an attorney from your department. Which brings me to why I'm here. Yes. I'd like a favor. Good luck to you. Thank you. What's the favor? Tell division you want to assign a lawyer from outside your department. Why? Because I'm a lawyer from outside your department. And don't think I'm not grateful. I've brought a letter of recommendation from Captain Bronski. You are an investigator. 
Why do you want to get stuffed up with grunt work? I don't consider it grunt work, ma'am. It's a five minute plea bargain and a week of paperwork. I'd look forward to it with relish, ma'am. And do you always talk as if your dialogue was written by someone who's not really good at it? I'm sorry if my over eagerness is grating. It's not, it's endearing. You could have a career as a cartoon squirrel. I want to make sure this is handled properly. Have you done litigation before? My first year with the JAG Corps. How many cases have you handled? Altogether? Yes. Six. How did you do? From what perspective? Your clients? Not well. OK. Those cases were lost on their merits, ma'am. Excuse me, this just came for you. It's from Division. This is Commander Lieutenant Galway. Really? How do you do? I really enjoyed last Christmas. That'll be all. So what do you say? Commander, may I call you Joanne? Yes, please. Joanne, you seem to be a fairly harmless, neurotic person. I appreciate that. And I'd like to help you out, but there's two things preventing me. The first is, while I sincerely believe you're, do you're doing an exceptionally sore job at your current assignment in internal affairs, but I have a hunch that as a litigator, you know, not so much. Uh, yes, but the second is that division already assigned out to me. What? They already assigned someone. I'm not sure why they care, but it's out of my hands now. They want you to brief the man. Apparently, you got some documents and letters. Yes. I have a staff meeting at 3. I'll be giving out assignments then. Come by, do your thing, try not to make anyone cry. Yes, ma'am. Tough break. Thank you, Captain. You can call me Isabel. And what's the name of the attorney? Ten Hut, officer on deck. Daniel Caffey. They're going to give you a lawyer. They're going to move, move you up to Washington, D.C. and give you a lawyer. I want you to remember something about these lawyers. They don't care about anything. They don't care about honor or loyalty. They don't care about Colonel Jessup or Lieutenant Kendrick. They don't care about me. And they definitely don't care about you. They're clowns. And that's why. So help me now, they're the only people who can save you. I want you girls to be smart. Go talk to your lawyer. I said for the OTH, if it's for CUA, you wouldn't do anything better than that. I don't think I need a civil for the OTH. If I file a motion to A motion to suppress. to suppress. Absolutely. On what grounds? Grounds? See, this is where your strategy begins to fall apart. Take the OTH. Excuse me, I'm sorry I'm late. I'm sure you have a good excuse. No, I just didn't really care enough about this meeting to be on time. He's kidding. Commander Galloway, this is Lieutenant Caffey. How do you do? You're a JG. I beg your pardon? This is the attorney division assigned? Yes. I wrote a 17-page memo to Bronsky outlining the situation. I pleaded my case for half an hour in his living room on a Sunday afternoon, and division assigned a lieutenant junior grade? Have I come at a bad time? Commander Galloway's from internal affairs. Oh, uh, whatever Sam did with the guy in the field garden, it wasn't her fault. She was tired. How's that? Thank you very much. Sam's got a baby at home, and she's sure she's about to say her first word any day now. How do you know? She just looks like she has something to say. She's 14 months old. What could she have to say? We've got a poll going if you want in on it. Ten bucks. Pick a word off the grid. What's left? Rosebud. Captain, with all due respect. All right, let's get started. Danny, Commander Gallo is here because you've been detailed by division. Detailed to do what? Detailed to handle this. Listen up. Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. A Marine PFC named Wilhelmina Santiago writes a letter claiming she knows the Marine on board who illegally fired from her weapon over the fence line. Santiago ends the letter by saying she wanted a transport off the base in exchange for the identity of the Marine. What's the fence line? Sam? A big wall separating the good guys from the bad guys. Okay. The woman who fired over the fence line was Santiago's squad leader, Lance Corporal Harriet Dawson. The fence line shooting, however, is completely beside the point. Well, what's the point? Santiago's dead. What happened? Dawson and another member of her squad, PFC Leah Downey, went into Santiago's room, tied her hands and feet, and stuck a rag into her mouth. The doctor said the rag must be poisoned by some kind of toxin. They poisoned the rag? Not according to them. Well, what do they say? Not much. They've been brought up here tomorrow morning. Thursday at 0600, you'll catch a transport down to Cuba to find out what you can. 
Commander Gallo is going to fill you up on the rest. Any questions so far? Was that 0600 in the morning, ma'am? Division want me to assign out to me. Any volunteers? No. Sam. Ma'am, I have a pilot. Work with Kathy on this. Doing what? Various administratives, backup, whatever. In other words, I have no responsibilities whatsoever. Right. My kind of case. Lieutenant Kathy, how long have you been in the Navy? I'm sorry? How long have you been in the Navy? Going on nine months now. Have you ever been in a courtroom? I had my driver's license suspended once. All right, Captain, this is absurd. Commander, Danny, if this thing ever went to court, those Marines wouldn't need a lawyer. They need a priest. No, they need a lawyer. Isabel, I'd like to say for the record that this is the least fun I've ever had at one of your staff meetings. Lieutenant Caffey is generally considered as one of our best litigators. He successfully plea bargained 44 cases in less than a year. One more and I get a set of steak knives. One of the people you'll be talking to down there is the barrack CO, Colonel Natalie Jessup. I assume you've heard of her? Ma'am? She's been in the papers a lot lately. She's expected to be director of operations for the NSC, golden girl of the court. Very big inside the DOD. How did someone get so very big inside the DOD? Is she touring? Did she cut an album? On top is an inventory of Santiago's Foot Locker on the night she died. Four camouflage pants, three long sleeve khaki shirts, three short sleeve khaki shirts, three pairs of boots, four pairs of green socks, four pairs of black socks. Commander? Water. Yes? I'm not sure socks and underwear are going to factor too heavily into this defense. I'm saying we need to get Santiago's personal belongings to her family after they've cleared evidence. Sam, you're in charge of socks and underwear. So it's a good thing I waited school for 21 years. These are the letters that Santiago wrote in her eight months at Gitmo. Guantanamo Bay. I knew that one. She wrote to her recruiter, HQ Atlantic, the Commandant of the Marine Corps. Nobody was listening. She wanted to be transferred off the base. You with me? Yeah. Finally, she wrote this letter, where she offered information about Corporal Dawson's fence line shooting in exchange for a transfer. This letter is the only physical evidence establishing a motive for Dawson to kill Santiago. Okay. And Santiago is who? The victim! Write that down. Am I right in assuming that these letters don't paint a very flattering picture of Santiago's treatment by the Marine Corps? Yes. And am I also right in assuming that a protracted investigation of this incident might cause some embarrassment for Madonna? Who? The base commander. The, the gal who's hot at the Pentagon. Colonel Jessup. Yes. But the point 12 is... Twelve years. I'm sorry? I'll get it knocked down to involuntary manslaughter. Twelve years. They'll be home in seven. You haven't talked to a witness or looked at a piece of paper. Pretty impressive. Either that or criminally stupid. What did you guess I'm thinking Kids. Right now? Commander... Excuse me, do you have some sort of jurisdiction here that I should know about? I'm special counsel for internal affairs, Lieutenant. My jurisdiction's pretty much in your face. Read the letters. Thank you for the time, Captain. You're not living now, are you? Yes, ma'am. I have to audit the paperwork on an engineer who was found littering in the Admiral's tulip garden. Someone may have forgotten to dot a few I's. Sam, I think she might have been talking about you. You think? The two of you. Don't get cute down there. The Marines in Guantanamo are fanatical. About what? About being Marines. My name is PFC Wilhelmina T. Santiago. I'm a Marine stationed in Marine Barracks, Windward, Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. I'm writing to you to inform you of my problems and to ask for your help. I've been mistreated since the very first day I arrived. I've been punished out on runs when the doctor said all I had was heat exhaustion. This is only one of my many mistreatments, and I can mention many more but do not want to take more of your time than I'm allowed to. Please, sir, I ask for your help. I need to be transferred out of the RSC. Good morning. I'm Lieutenant Commander Galloway. Ma'am, Lance Corporal Harry W. Dawson, ma'am. Marine Barracks, Rifle Security Company, Windward. Ma'am, Private Folks Class, Leah Downey, ma'am. At ease. I work for the Navy JAG Corps. I'm the one who had you guys brought up here. I wanted to stop in and see if there was anything you needed or any questions you might have. It's natural for you to be a little confused and frightened, so if there's anything I can do to help, any questions you wanted to ask? Ma'am, permission to speak? Go ahead. Well, I've got some Spider-Mans and some Batmans sitting down in my footlocker, ma'am. Somebody will dog them for sure if they're not secured. Do you think this is a joke? Ma'am, no, ma'am. What about you, is this a joke? No, ma'am, it's not a joke, ma'am. I apologize to the commander, ma'am. I didn't mean nothing. About the books, ma'am, I, I, didn't, I didn't mean nothing. You were read your Article 31 rights. Did you understand them? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand them? Yes, ma'am. Say you understand them. Ma'am, I understand them, ma'am. Can I get an MP? I'm going to talk to Private Downey alone for a moment. 
Can you take Corporal Dawson into a holding room? Aye, aye, Commander. Right, let's move. Hey, Sid, move it! Ma'am, permission to be dismissed. You're dismissed. Hi. Leah, I know about Code Reds. All right, man on first, one down. Let's go for two. Hit if you have the Sherby. Get your glove down. You gotta get your glove down, Sherby. Pick up some dirt with that ball. All right, let's go again. Man on first, Excuse one down. Excuse me. One second. You gotta trust me, Sherby. If you keep your eyes open while the ball's coming towards you, your chances of catching the ball increase by a factor of 10. You wanna suit up? We need all the help we can get. No thanks, I can't throw and catch things. Well, good, neither can any of you. I wanted to talk to you about Dawson and Downey. I've done something wrong. I? I'm wondering why two prisoners have been sitting in a cell since this morning while their lawyer is outside hitting a ball. We need to practice. That wasn't funny. It was a little funny. <sighs> Lieutenant, would you feel very insulted if I asked your superior officer to recommend that different counsel be assigned? Why? I don't know how to say this without possibly hurting your feelings, but I don't think you're fit to handle this defense. You don't even know me. Ordinarily, it takes someone hours to discover I'm not fit to handle a defense. I think there are people who would have thought that was funny. I do know you, and I know who your father was, and I know you went to Harvard Law on a Navy scholarship, and you're probably just treading water for the three years you gotta serve, just kinda laying low till you can get out and get a real job. If that's the case, that's fine. I won't tell anyone, but my feeling is that if this case is handled in the fast food, slick, rick, Persian Bazaar manner with which you seem to handle everything else, something's gonna get missed. And I wouldn't be doing my job if I allowed Dawson and Downey to spend any more time in jail than absolutely necessary because their attorney had predetermined the path of least resistance. I'm so attracted to you right now. Shut up! Yes, ma'am. I don't think your clients murdered anybody. Well, we're just gonna have to take their word for it, don't you think? I mean, I don't think there was any intent. The, the doctor's report says Santiago died of asphyxiation, brought on by an acute lactic acidosis, and, and that the nature of the acidosis strongly suggests poisoning. Now, the, I don't know what most of that means, but it sounds pretty bad. The doctor's wrong. Oh, that's a relief. I thought I wouldn't be able to use the liar, liar, pants on fire defense. Kathy! Look, rest assured, I'm completely on top of the situation with Dawson and Doodley. Downey! Downey. I'll speak to your supervisor. I understand. You go straight up Pennsylvania Avenue. It's the big white house with pillars in front. Thank you. I don't think you'll have much luck, though. I was detailed by division. Remember, someone over there is under the impression that I'm a pretty good lawyer. And while I respect your enthusiasm and admire your interest, I think I can handle things by myself at this point. Do you know what a code red is? I'm appalled. No, I don't. Find out. You're appalled. Yes, ma'am. That's pretty strong language, Matthew. I mean, I think you better cool off before you work yourself into a lather. You're appalled. Santiago's written letters to everyone but Santa Claus complaining about her treatment. She's broken the chain of command. She's threatened to rat out a member of her unit, a member of her squad, and to say nothing of the fact that she's a US Marine. And it would appear that she can't run from here to there without collapsing from heat exhaustion. What is going on over at Windward, Matthew? Ma'am, I'd rather have this conversation in private. That won't be necessary, Colonel. I can handle the problem. Like the way you handled Curtis Barnes? My leadership's what brought me to this base. Don't interrupt me. I'm your superior officer. And I'm yours, Matthew. Yes, ma'am. Now, what are you going to do about this? I think we should transfer Santiago off the base right away, right now. Transfer Santiago. Yes, ma'am. I suppose you're right. I suppose that's the thing to do. You know what? I've got a better idea. Let's transfer the whole squad off the base. You know, I think we better do that. Oh, on second thought, Windward. The whole Windward division. Let's transfer them off the base. John, go on out there and get those boys down off the fence. They're packing their bags. Tom, yes, get me the president. We're surrendering our position in Cuba. Yes, Wait a minute, Tom. Don't call the president. Maybe that's the wrong thing to do. Maybe you should let us consider this for a moment. You're dismissed. Maybe, instead of giving up because a Marine made a mistake, maybe we should train Santiago. And maybe we have the responsibility to this country to see that the men and women charged with its security are properly trained professionals. 
And maybe we have that responsibility to the other members of the Corps as well. Yes, yes, I'm pretty sure I read that somewhere. Now, I'm trying to think of how I might feel if a Marine got hurt or killed because a PFC in my command didn't know what in the world she was doing. And this brief meditation has brought me into thinking that transferring Santiago, while expeditious and certainly painless, might not be, in the manner of speaking, the American way. Santiago stays where she is. We're going to train her. John, you're in charge. If she doesn't make 4646 on her next ProCon report, I'm going to blame you. Then, I'm going to kill you. Ma'am, you're making a mistake. Matthew, I believe I'll have that word in private with you now. John, that is all. Why don't you and I have lunch at the O Club? We can talk about how to train Santiago. I'd be delighted, ma'am. You're dismissed. Mm, Matthew, sit, please. What do you think of Kendrick? My ideas of Lieutenant Kendrick are I really think he's kind of a weasel myself. Yes, ma'am. But he's an awfully good officer. And in the end, we see eye to eye on how to run a Marine Corps unit. We're in the business of saving lives, Matthew. With every degree we allow ourselves to fall off the mark of perfection, more people die. And I believe that taking a Marine who's a weak link and sending her off to another assignment is the same thing as sending a kid into a jungle with a weapon that backfires. Matthew, sit down. I'm a little younger than you are, Matthew. And to say nothing of the fact that I'm a woman, and by all appearance, you're not. If that is a source of tension or embarrassment, well, does it look like I care? We're in the business of saving lives, Matthew. Don't ever question my orders in front of another officer. Officer on deck, 10 hut. Hi. Sir, Lance Corporal Harry W. Dawson, sir. Someone has been working and playing well with others, Harriet. Sir, Private First Class Leah Downey, sir. I'm Daniel Caffey. I'm your attorney. And this is Sam Weinberg. She's from the AC Nelson Media Research. She's going to ask you a few questions about the viewer preferences in the Caribbean Command. Y you can sit down. Is this your signature? Yes, sir. You don't have to call me, sir. Is this your signature? Sir, yes, sir. And you certainly don't have to do it twice in one sentence. What's the code red? Sir? Really, you don't have to call me, sir. What's the code red? Sir, a code red is a disciplinary engagement. What's that? Sir, a Marine falls out of line. It's the responsibility of the men in this unit to get him back on track. Did you know about this? It's like a hazing. Was the attack on Santiago a code red? Yes, sir. Does she ever talk? Sir, Private Donnie will answer any direct questions you ask her, sir. Swell. What, it says in the report that you guys denied putting poison on the rag. What were you going to do? Sir? What was the code red supposed to be? We were going to shave her head, sir. We were just going to shave her head. When all of a sudden? We saw blood dripping out of her mouth, sir. We pulled the tape off and removed the gag. Was there more blood? Yes, sir, all down her face, sir. That's when Corporal Dawson called the ambulance. You called the ambulance? Yes, sir. That wasn't in the report. We were never asked about it, sir. Did anyone see you call the ambulance? No, sir. Were you there when the ambulance got there? Yes, sir. That was when we were taken under arrest. All right. Harriet, something I want to tell you about called attorney-client privilege. It means you can say whatever, whatever you want to us in here, and we're not allowed to repeat it without your, your permission. We took an oath. You took the oath, didn't you, Sam? Yeah. Sam took the oath. Did you attack Santiago with the intent of killing her? No, sir. What was your intent? To train her, sir. Train her to do what? Train her to think of her unit before herself. Train her to respect the code, sir. What's the code? Who cares? No. Unit, What's core, God, country. I beg your pardon? Our code is Unit Core God Country, ma'am. That's our code, ma'am. It seems to be working out well for you. All right, we're off. Anything I can get for you guys? Books, paper, cigarettes, a ham sandwich? Sir, no, thank you, sir. Harriet, there's a concept I think you better start warming up to. Sir? I'm the only friend you've got. Dan Cathy. Smiling Jack Ross. I hope for Dawson and Downey's sake you practice law better than you play softball. Unfortunately for Dawson and Downey's sake, I don't do anything better than I play softball. What are we looking at? They plead to manslaughter. I'll drop the conspiracy and bad conduct. 
20 years, they'll be home in half that time. I want 12. Can't do it. They called the ambulance, Jack. I don't care if they called the Avon lady. They killed the Marine. The lab report, autopsy, even initial ER and COD reports all say the same thing. Maybe, maybe not. The chief of internal medicine at the Guantanamo Bay Naval Hospital says she's sure. What do you know about code reds? Oh, man. We off the record? No, we're not. Look, I'll give you the 12 years. But before you go getting yourself into trouble down there, you should know this. The platoon commander, Lieutenant Jonathan Kendrick, held a meeting with his men and specifically told them not to touch Santiago. I'll talk to you when I get back. Do we have a deal? Talk to me when I get back. Well, come on in. Thank you. Any luck getting me replaced? Is there anyone in this command that you don't either drink or play softball with? Say, Commander. You can call me Joe. Joe, I have no inbred hostility toward you. I really don't. But if you ever talk to a client of mine again without my permission, I'll have you disbarred. I had authorization. Authorization from where? Downey's closest living relative, Ginny Miller, her aunt on her mother's side. You got authorization from Aunt Ginny. I thought she might be concerned. I gave her a call, perfectly within my province. You got authorization from Aunt Ginny. Very nice woman. We talked for about an hour. Does Aunt Ginny have a barn? Maybe we can hold the trial there. I'll sew the costumes. Maybe her uncle Goober can be the judge. More good news. My office has been encouraging me to get out of the district more, to observe how our lawyers are working in the field. Guess where I'm going? A target range? I'm going to Cuba with you tomorrow. The hits just keep on coming. She's asleep now. You're my witness. The baby spoke. My daughter said a word. She made a sound. I'm not really sure if it was a word. Oh, come on. Of course it was a word. OK. She said ma. She did. She said ma. She was pointing at a doorknob. That's right. Pointing at the door as if to say, ma, look, a doorknob. <laughs> Jack Ross came to see me today. He offered me the 12 years. That's it what you always wanted. It took 45 seconds. He barely put up a fight. Danny, take the 12 years. It's a gift. Yeah. I'll see you tomorrow. Don't forget to wear those whites. We're going to Cuba in July. I don't look good in whites. No one looks good in whites. But again, we're going to Cuba in July. You got Dramamine? Dramamine will help keep you cool? You get sick when you fly. I get sick when I fly because I'm afraid of crashing into a large mountain. I don't think Jimmy Mean will help with that. I got some oregano. I hear that looks pretty good. Yeah. You know, Ross said the strangest thing to me before he left. He said that the platoon commander, Lieutenant Kendrick, told the men not to touch Santiago. So? I never mentioned Kendrick. I don't even know who he is. Oh, whatever. I'll see you tomorrow.
Anyone in Alpha touches him and you'll be filling sandbags till you beg for mercy. Dismissed. Corporal Amaker. Sir. How about my brave men of Bravo? I bet I send this over to your boys in Santiago's Marine by sunrise, am I right? Sir, yes, sir. Anyone in Bravo touches him, you'll answer to me. Is that clear? She's observing and evaluating. How do you do? Nice to meet you, Commander. Sam Weinberg. She has no responsibilities here whatsoever. I'm asked Captain Parkinson, Lieutenant Kendrick, and Matthew's my second in command. Jonathan's XO for the windward side. Lieutenant, I had the pleasure of meeting your father once. I was, I was a teenager and he spoke in my high school. Lionel Caffey? Yes, ma'am. Oh my, oh my. John, you're too young to know this, but this man's dad made a lot of enemies down in your neck of the woods. Jefferson v. Madison County School District. Folks down there said it was all right for the kids to say the Lord's Prayer in the classroom, and Lionel Caffey said no, no it wasn't. I'll tell you something else. If Adlai Stevenson had ever been elected, you'd be sitting next to the son of the Attorney General. How's your dad? I beg your pardon? Is he still trying to overthrow the government? Not any longer, ma'am. Oh no. Don't tell me he passed away. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, son. Thank you. It was seven years ago, ma'am. Well, don't I feel like a jerk? Not at all, ma'am. What can I do for you, Danny? Not much at all, I'm afraid, ma'am. This is more a formality than anything else. The JAG Corps requires that we interview all relevant witnesses. The JAG Corps can be demanding that way. It shouldn't take more than an hour. John, check your watch. Go. Let go of me! You're what? lucky it's what? worse, Emily. It could be worse. It could be someone else. Now, on the morning of the 6th, you were contacted by an NIS agent who said that you were tipped off to an illegal fence line shooting. Yes. And Santiago was going to reveal the person's name in exchange for a transfer off the base. Yes. If there are any details that I'm leaving out, you should feel free to speak up. Thank you. Now, it was at this point that you called Captain Markinson and Lieutenant Kendrick into your office. Yes. And what happened then? We, we, we agreed that for her safety, she should be transferred off the base. Santiago was going to be transferred? On the first flight available back to the States. Six o'clock the next morning, six hours too late as it turned out. Yeah. Well, that's all the questions I have for you. Thanks for your time. Oh, wait a minute. I've got some questions. No, you don't. Yes, I do. No, you really don't. Colonel, at 3 a.m., the attending physician, Commander Stone, was unable to determine the cause of death. At 5 a.m., she said it was poison. Do you have any idea what might have persuaded her? You'd have to ask Stone. Did you meet with the doctor between 3 and 5? Joe? Of course I met with the doctor. One of my Marines was dead. See, one of her Marines was dead. Let's go. Lieutenant Kendrick, do you think Santiago was murdered? I beg your pardon? I'm just curious. You knew all these Marines. Was Santiago murdered? Lieutenant, I believe in the Lord our God and his son Jesus Christ. And because I do, I can say this. 
Santiago is dead, and that's a tragedy. But she's dead because she had no code. She's dead because she had no honor. And God was watching. How do you feel about that theory? Sounds good. Let's go. I don't like you people. Oh, look, another Christmas card I'm not going to get. Colonel, have you ever heard the term code red? I was under the impression that Lieutenant Caffey was running this investigation. <laughs> it's an easy mistake to make. I'm sorry, Colonel. She wasn't. Colonel, have you ever heard the term code red? I've heard the term, yes. This past February, you received a cautionary memo from the Commander-in-Chief of the Atlantic Fleet warning that the practice of Code Reds was not to be condoned by officers. I submit to you that whoever wrote that memo has never served on a working end of a Soviet-made Cuban AK-47 assault rifle. However, the directive having come from the Commander, I gave it its due attention. What is your point, Joanne? She has no point. She also has no point. It's part of her charm. We're my, off. Thank you very much point. for your is what looks like premeditated murder may have just been a botched up code red. Do code reds still happen on the space, Colonel? Joe, the Colonel does not have the answer to that. Yes, she does. No, she really doesn't. Yeah, she really does. Colonel, you know, it just hit me. She outranks you, Danny. Yes, ma'am. You know, I, I want to tell you something, listen up, because I mean it. There's nothing more alluring on heaven and earth than a woman you have to salute in the morning. Take it from someone who knows. If you've never found yourself in a romantic entanglement with a superior officer, you're letting the best of life pass you by. Colonel, do code, reds, do code reds still happen on this base? You see, my problem is having a Senate confirmation hearing on the horizon has kind of thrown a wrench into my social life. But you're a good looking guy, Lieutenant. And for you, I might be willing to discuss an exception. I need you to answer my question, ma'am. You'll get an answer. I need it now, ma'am. Take caution in your tone, Commander. I'm a fair woman, but this heat is making me absolutely crazy. You want to know about Code Reds? On the record, I tell you I discourage a practice on occurrence with the Commander's directive. Off the record, I tell you they're an invaluable part of close infantry training, and if they happen to go on without my knowledge, so be it. I run my unit how I run my unit. You want to investigate me? Roll the dice and take your chances. It's not like you're gonna come down here, flash a badge, and make me nervous. I eat my breakfast 80 yards away from 4,000 Cubans who are trained to kill me. Let's go. The Corporal Scott Gpel child will take you back to the flight line. Thank you. Colonel, I'll just need a copy of that transfer order. What's that? Santiago's transfer order. You guys have paperwork and that sort of thing. I just need it for the file. For the file. Yeah. Of course you can have the transfer order for, for the file. I'm here to help you any way I can. You believe that, don't you, Danny? That I'm here to help you any way I can? Sure. The corporal can run you by personnel on your way to the flight line. You can have all the transfer orders you want. Let's go. But you have to ask me nicely. I beg your pardon? You have to ask me nicely. I don't mind the bombs and the bullets and the blood, Danny. I don't mind the fear, the heat, the stress. I don't want money. I don't want medals. What I do want is for you to stand there in that prissy white uniform and with your Harvard mouth extend me a little courtesy. I need you to ask me nicely. Don't do it, Danny. Colonel, if it's not too much trouble, I'd like a copy of that transfer order, please, ma'am. No problem. 